I always like these old History Channel conspiracy memes out of Magnus work aliens. No, it's not that complicated. All right, so we've got charge to mass ratio. And we're going to look at this one right here. This is an experiment that J.J. Thompson did uh, where he measured the charge to mass ratio. What does that mean, by the way? Charge is Q, mass is M. So the charge to mass ratio is Q over M. He figured that out for the electron in 1897. So let's look at a version of uh, the experiment that he did right here. So this part right here, for example, um, first of all, we were accelerating, maybe I'll call this like one, and then I'll call this uh, section right here two, for example. And this one right here, there was a potential difference that's going across this. So basically what happened is this, in this first section right here, um, we're going to be accelerating electrons through a cathode ray tube. Okay, so that's what's happening in one. And then in number two, what you're doing is you're taking those, ex uh, those accelerated electrons and passing them through a magnetic field. So they're going to be deflecting. Okay, so let's go over each of these in detail. So we'll start off with number one. So if we're going to be accelerating these electrons through a cathode ray tube, what's going on? Well, they're going to be gaining kinetic energy. And so let's look at this. So what's the kinetic energy of an electron after being accelerated across a potential difference? So what's that? Well, we have an equation actually for it, and it goes like this. This is, first of all, this is the kinetic energy of an electron. It turns out if you uh, send it across a potential difference of V volts, uh, then it's just going to be E times V. At least E because that's the charge of an electron. Right, so that's actually what we're going to say here. E is going to be the charge of an electron. All right, so if we take this right here, then let's try to get the um, speed then out of this right here. Let's try to get the speed. Let's try to isolate for that. So we'll do that by uh, maybe moving the 2 over and dividing by m. So that means I have v squared for now, let's see, equals 2 times e times capital V. Now remember, these are two different v's. Okay, the lowercase v is the speed, the uppercase v is a potential difference. And don't forget I'm dividing this here by m, the mass. And then, of course, if I want to get v by itself, then I'm just going to take the square root, technically plus or minus the square root, but we don't care about the negative, so we're just going to say it's 2 times e times v over m, and I'm going to take that and square root it. And this right here will be an equation I will designate like equation 1. And if we look at the units for everything, well, V, capital V, at least it's a potential difference, so that's uh, in volts. V is the electron speed, that's in meters per second. We just found an equation for that, at least. M is the mass of the electron, if you want, actually. Like, if you're doing um, you know, a question on an exam, you can look that up. That's given in the data booklet. So is the charge of an electron. This is actually 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. They didn't know this at the time, though, so we'll just leave it like this. So let's look now at what happens to these electrons after they've been accelerated. Now they enter region 2, which is where they enter a magnetic field. So let's just assume for the sake of this discussion here that the magnetic field B is out of the page. So in other words, it's coming towards you. So that's why I drew a bunch of dots. These are electrons, so they're negatively charged. And what does that mean? If I'm going to do that, if I want to find out the force on these ones right here, I'm going to need uh, hand rule number three. And because they're electrons, they're negative, I'm going to use left hand rule number three. Well, what does that mean? That means that I'm going to take ball well, my left hand, and I'm going to put my fingertips in the direction of the magnetic field, which is out of the page, in this case towards me. I put my thumb in the direction of the uh, velocity, so that means to the right, and that means my palm is going upwards. But hey, if those electrons are feeling an upwards force, that means they're going to move in a circular path. They're actually going to move like this here in a path like that, where I could even define like a radius, you know, a radius of, of actual like this path here as it's going up in a circle. Okay, so then let's consider the different forces acting on this electron, this single electron. So maybe I'll designate the magnetic force, maybe I'll write that as uh, blue, maybe I'll make the centripetal force, because it's also going to feel that, I'll make that maybe yellow. So let's see, so magnetic force, I need an equation for that, and we do have that, um, F equals, and it goes QVB. Of course it's sine theta, but because these are here are 90 degrees, we can actually say this is just a one. So that means then I'm gonna end up with just the force, it's just gonna be a QVB, but because it's an electron, I can say E. So I'll say the force then equals EVB. 
And maybe what I'll do is I'll even designate that with like a little M for like the magnetic force. So I'll say, okay, that's my magnetic force there. Okay, fine. And centripetal force, what happens there? Well, centripetal force, remember from your uh, data booklet, it's, well, we have a centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R. So we throw an M in front of it because M V squared over R. There we go. So this right here, I could call this... Uh, I'll maybe go back and just label these properly. And if I wanted to do this here properly, then, uh, well, I'll actually just leave it like this. I think we're okay. So that means it's just mv squared over r. So if that's the case, then what can I do? Well, this uh, centripetal force and this magnetic force, I mean, the magnetic force is causing the centripetal force. So that means I can set these two forces equal to each other. So in other words, I'm going to set... Uh, this FM, this blue one right here, I'm going to say that one up there equals the yellow one, which is FC. If that's the case, then away I go, I'll just set them equal to, so that means I have EVB equals MV squared over R. Okay, but if I'm looking for the charge to mass ratio, I better do E over M. So I'm going to divide them both sides by M, so I'll say EVB, I'll say over M equals uh, v squared over r, but I can keep going. Let's see, I want to move my uh, b to the other side and my v to the other side. Notice I move my v to the other side. Um, it's going to be v squared over v. Actually, maybe I'll just make it really obvious. I'll actually write them all out. So I'll say e over m equals, let's see, on the top here I've got v squared, and on the bottom now I have a v, b, and an r at the bottom. So I have v and b and r at the bottom. And if you look at this right here, this v cancels out that squared. So in the end then I'm going to end up with an equation that I can state is e over m equals, let's see, it's going to be just v, like the speed, over b r. And what I'll do, I think I'll designate that right there equation number 2. Okay, so our last step then, well, let's use our two equations. Our equation 1, which was this, our equation 2, which was this, and let's use that to substitute for v. Do you notice we have this little v right here? So let's take that one and shove it into here. Okay, so let me just start. So I'll do e over m then. That's going to equal, well, let's see then. This v is going to be this whole mess right up here. So that means I'm going to have a 2e capital V over m, all that square rooted, and all that, remember, is still divided by BR. So I've got BR like this. E, yuck. I don't like the square root, so maybe I'll square both sides. Okay, so if I do that, then I'm going to get E squared over M squared equals, well, that'll get rid of the square root at least, so I'll have 2 E capital V over M. And don't forget, I've still got a BR on the bottom, but those are going to be squared. So maybe I'll say M and then, actually, I'll just make a little bit more room. I'll write a little bit lower like this. So I'm still going to have the b, but that's going to be squared times r squared. That's because I squared both sides. See, this square root got rid of yes, but this one right here, this br, those still have to be squared. All right, there we go. Uh, can I do anything with this? Uh, yes. If you notice, this one right here, this m squared right here, if I move my m over here, m over m squared, that means I'm actually going to lose the squared and that m. I can take this e and divide it, so that means e squared over e, that would just give me an e, so there we go. And if I look at this then, I just end up with e over m equals, let's see, it's just 2 times v, capital V that is, divide that by, uh, let's see, b squared r squared. And there we go, there's our equation. So this tells me the charge to mass ratio given what the, as long as you know the um, potential difference, if you know the magnetic field strength, and the uh, radius of curvature. You can remember this thing here started curving. As long as you know those things, you can figure out the mass, a charge to mass ratio of the electron. Uh, so that's why I just wrote this down, right? So if you know these things right here, then you can actually find... Uh, the charge to mass ratio. And in fact, for the electron at least, E over M is uh, 1.76 times 10 to the 11, and that's, of course, charge, which is coulombs, per kilogram, because that's the mass. Now, this works for other particles too. So, you know, before we had just with an E, and now we can actually do it for anything in general. So in other words, we can say Q, because that's the charge of any particle. Charge over mass is, again, 2 times V over B squared R squared. So this right here is useful 
for just about anything. Because see, if you don't know what a particle is, so let's just say you're, you have a mystery particle. Well, if you run it through uh, you know, this potential difference, if you know the potential difference, you know the magnetic field strength, and you know that radius of curvature, then that's going to be tied to the charge to mass ratio. So that helps, for example, scientists or even like forensic uh, analysts, if there's been a crime or something like that, you can tell then what that particle is. So that's related to, for example, mass spectroscopy.